Hey, welcome to the second segment of Get Real with Jeffrey and Chuck. And today we're going to talk about something that is probably, I would say, one of the top things that causes trouble in a marriage. And Jeffrey, why don't you tell us about it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I bet you already know what it is. It's money. Yeah. Money and finances. Uh, I know that, that y'all haven't had to deal with this, but I think Chuck and I have had to deal with it. And I know y'all haven't. Just so. A just a little, you know, I think if you're breathing and you're upright, you're dealing with money. Yes, yes. Okay. So we're going to talk about that in this segment. So stand by. As we dive into this, I, I, it's hard to think because aside from sin and redemption, uh, money is the most, if not one of the most mentioned things in the Bible discussed and talked about. It is uh, something that we know statistically tends to become the, the, one of the bigger things that couples fight about and end up divorcing over. So, but as Christians, money has a whole different, different vibe, should have. Doesn't always have, but should have. So, you know, I, I, you and I have both struggled with money, personally after the stroke, and, and you and, and how you felt about it specifically in your business. Why don't you recap a little bit of that for us? Yeah. Uh, that was my main control of my, that was what was the main control of my life was money. It wow. still is. It still really is. The difference is, is that I understand that God has got control of it. Mm -hmm. And he's above it, right? Way above it. That is a, in God's eyes, that is a small part of who he, or what he wants to bless me with. Mm -hmm. And so, it being at the forefront of probably so many minds and so many people, especially men, I'm not saying that women don't deal with it as much as men. I know my wife doesn't. Yeah. Amy is just, she has been my rock. When I was trying to figure out what we were going to do <laughs> when we were, you know, six months late on our mortgage because business just wasn't there. Yeah. And she was always, 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 it's going to be just fine. Wow. And I'm like, no, it ain't. Is it? It's, I'm I'm not, I, I, I'm I'm it's in my DNA. It's, ah, you're killing me. Yeah, I'm supposed to be able to, it's supposed to have, it's, I'm supposed to provide. I don't know what to do. Right. And, uh, <laughs> and that, I've been that, that guy. I've yeah. been that guy. I'm sometimes still that guy. And so I knew I wanted that, but I couldn't figure out how to do, get that. Yeah. Until... Probably a year ago to two years, I'd say a year to two years, when things were so tough in our business that we weren't getting paid. Mm -hmm. And we were, and, 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 and in our, Amy and I's uh, eyes, everything else and everybody else gets paid before us. That's the way our foundation of our company has been. Sure. And, uh, but when it got to be three, four, five months, mm -hmm. uh, it was really nerve-wracking and trying to understand, God, what are you trying to do? And so I, I had a, uh, uh, I, I was studying, learning, trying to figure out, searching the scriptures, and the revelation that I had is that God's promises are real. Mm -hmm. His word is true and real. Mm -hmm. That was a revelation to me. Like, I, I, I got you to pull up a scripture. Uh, it was Philippians 4, 6 and 7, I believe it is. Let me, yeah, I'm, I'm going to read this because this scripture, and I have another one in Proverbs 3, 5, 6, and 7, and 8 that I stand on when I realized that this is the truth. And in my heart, I took it as the truth, that God's promises are real. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. That was hard for me. I would say, okay, God, I, you lead me. I'm a guy. I'm a hunter. I'm going to go out there. Show me where I need to be. And nothing would come up. Show me where the bird's at. <laughs> show me where the bird's at. Be your pointer. Yeah, show me. And I would pray. I go, I will go. You know me, Lord. I will go. 
Verse 7, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding. Okay, the peace of God. That was what we talked about in a previous segment. Mm -hmm. That I got back when I realized that God has got me. Mm -hmm. And he is in control. And his word is true. Then it goes, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Yeah, peace in your heart and in your mind. I was in a situation at a uh, at a store here in Baton Rouge, and uh, they had a lady in front of me. It was older, older lady, and she was uh, getting her prescriptions. And uh, I, I can see it as much as today. And this was probably three, four years ago. And she, the doc, the pharmacist, came up and said. Uh, your prescriptions were like two hundred something dollars, and she just freaked. And she says, "I need my prescription, but I don't have the money. Wow. I don't know what I'm going to do." And I'm, you know, I'm standing right behind. You know, you have the line. You got to stand. You can hear what's going on. Right. You kind of not you're not supposed to, but you can. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm just listening, and in my heart, I could, I could hear. And I know it was the Holy Spirit telling me, help her. Hmm. That's what I heard, help her. But then I started justifying. You know, then here comes the other, the other, uh, the, the other, the other devil, voice. the other voice on the other shoulder yeah. saying, uh, you're going to embarrass her. You don't want to wow. do that. Or then it would be, well, what, do you, what should I do? You know, and it was like, you really don't have the money. Right now, it's money's tight. Those voices. And when she walked out without a prescription, I don't remember if she got it or not. I can't really, I, can, I just don't remember if she got it or not. I don't think she did. When I got to my car, I felt so guilty mm. because I didn't follow the truth, the I will take care of you, trust yeah. in me. Believe in me. I got you. Mm -hmm. So when I went home and I told the smarter one of us <laughs> that what happened, and I was heartbroken mm. and feeling guilty, and she looked at me and she said, Jeffrey, don't ever do that again. And let those voices that are negative and fear and doubt and Poverty and all that garbage mm -hmm. that is not true right. to where we're supposed to stand as children yes. of the Most High God. Mm -hmm. Don't ever let that happen again. Don't let money yeah. control you. From that point on, Chuck, I have never, and I, God knows my heart, yeah. have ever let money Stop me when I hear that voice. Yeah. Now, the difference is, is I have to be, have a peace mm -hmm. inside right. and a generous heart. Mm -hmm. And when I hear though that garbage mm -hmm. trying to stop me, I can squash it. Yep. It took me a little while, but I can do it now. When, when it comes up, not, there's somebody that, you know, I say, let me just, let me just buy this person's dinner. They're, in, they're, they're, they're behind me in, in line. Here, here's 10 bucks. I'm just feeling like this, 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 this family or whatever. I do it. Mm -hmm. No questions. Yeah, good. When the doubt or the fear or the, the, that God's not going to take care of me with the money or he's not going to take care of this, even though money might be tight, he's, <laughs> he's got all the money. Right. Well, you know, they say um, wrong voices lead to bad choices. Oh, that's so good. So listening to wrong voices leads to bad choices. So I, I understand. I get that. So have you ever been in that situation? And, and <laughs> well, I'll do you one better. You know, it's interesting because you know God has us in in walk through similar things and yet different similarities mm -hmm. uh, because um, you know I, I've gone through all the scriptures 
and said, you know, God's word says, hey, you put your faith in me, you'll not be disappointed, right? Scripture. Well, um, those who put their faith in me will not be put to shame. Okay, God, well, let me see. Um, I, I just lost a credit card because I couldn't pay the bill. So I'm um, feeling shame. Hmm. Maybe that, maybe that word doesn't mean what you think it means, right? Uh, so I'm, but it, it, I think, Jeffrey, that as we walk through things, it shows the depth to which we are being corrected by the length at which we stay in discipline. Mm. By that I mean this. Um, money was a very big issue for me. I had the stroke after uh, working three straight weeks, seven days a week, including Sundays, which I knew better, 18 hours a day. And so all that stress and all the bad eating habits that went along with it just compiled into that, that one thing. And then, obviously, I went from making a nice six-figure income to having a stroke and, and working for myself. All of a sudden, what? <laughs> you know, six figures, I was lucky that I made five figures the next year. Mm -hmm. And so it's the kind of thing where, um, you know, I just had to say, okay, God, what are you doing? You know, because I want the peace. I want, and, and there are times, brother, that I'll testify right here. I would be laying on the couch. We had my son in private school, and my bank account was way overdrawn, trying to pay his tuition, and I would lay on the couch and laugh. And, and, and my wife at the time would be like, why are you laughing? It's pretty dark. It's like, because I'm just waiting to see what God's going to do next. Mm -hmm. He's going to do something. And she'd walk out to the mailbox, and there's a check for $2,000 in the mailbox, from a relative who writes a card saying, wish I could do more. Wow, mm. okay, wow. But, and then go from that to, okay, I came through, Chuck. Can you believe if I don't come through when you think it should come through, right? Because if I'm still looking to him for money, mm. then money is still the crutch. Yep. It doesn't matter if it came from him, from the guy who, paid a bill that, you know, had left me hanging until he got money and now he's paying. Whatever it is, it's that crutch. And it occurred to me, uh, the friends that I have that are in the Special Forces, and by the way, thank you to our, our veterans. Yes. I, yes, yeah, I, I mean, you guys are, are amazing, and, I, and thank you for the freedom that you allow us to live under. Mm -hmm. um, but the, my friends that are in Special Forces, when they are, um, when they are, have a fear of drowning, like a Navy SEAL has a fear of drowning, to help them get over it, they drown them and then resuscitate them. If you have a fear of heights, they throw you off a, a, a tower that's, that's tethered. They don't let you hit the ground. But, and that's the way they break you of these things. And so, in a way, God breaking me of my dependence on money, even money that came from Him, right? Because it's like, well, God, I tithe. Your word says in Malachi that you're going to open the windows of heaven. So, to make sure I have the money I need, I'm going to tie. Mm. Conditions. Yeah, it's it's a, conditions. Not, and, and, and God one time told me, he said, Chuck, I'm not your bank. I'm not the Easter money. I'm not Santa Claus. You know, stop seeking my hand and seek my face. Mm. You know, and so, um, so I, you know, the fact that you are able to um, read the Word of God and and pull what you need from, from the tough times that you went through into a place of peace, it's like, man, go, brother, because that's not where I am. That's not where I have been. I, I, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm walking through it. Uh, you know, um, on, Obviously, my, my need is much more dire, and so is it much more dire because I, ref, I refuse to submit? You know, God's Word says in Ecclesiastes that He, he makes everything beautiful in its time. All right, so... I'm like, okay, Lord, when is the time? When is the time for this to be beautiful? Because it ain't feeling really beautiful right. right now. But then, you know, so that's that's the that's the thing for me that you know I get it. Um, you know, I, I try to be obedient, and now the focus of my obedience is to please my father, not to get me out of a financial bind, mm -hmm. not to make sure that you know I have what I need in my house. Because you know, we've talked about this. It's it's heartbreaking to be in a line at a grocery store and know that you have $60 in your hand to feed your family for a week. And your young daughter, who is a jewel of a child, who, who makes it easy to be a dad, 
never gives me a lick of trouble. Never. She walks up and with a little five dollar doll and said, "Daddy, can I have this?" To have to tell that little girl that it's not in the budget. To have to tell that little girl you can't do that for her. Man, that is. I, 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 the level of heartbreak that happens at that moment is unreasonable. It's unreal. It's like, it's, it's, it's compared to everything else I've had to deal with with a stroke, that's nothing compared to that, to the heartbreak mm-hmm. of that. And so, you know, for me, it's, but, but again, God time and time again has told me, Chuck, you know what? It's more about your character. I care about your character more than I care about your circumstance. Because do I look like I missed a meal? You know, I have a roof over my head. So, you know, I, I, I but it's, it's a fundamental thing of, okay, all of that has now led me back around to where I should have been from the start. You know, I had the stroke eight years ago as we taped this. Mm-hmm. It led me back where I should have been from the start, which is please God because he's worthy of that. He's worthy. He says, where says, I desire obedience more than sacrifice. So when I'm struggling to try to make sure I give him the tithe, which I shouldn't be because he gets the first dollars anyway. So I shouldn't be struggling to get the tithe money to him, right? But when I'm struggling to get that, he would rather me be obedient to him than sacrifice to try to try to make him happy, to try to make daddy happy so he doesn't, uh, you know, cut me out of the will, <laughs> so to speak. Right. Right. So that's, so that's, but that's, again, it's the purpose behind the pain. And we, we you know, we'll, I'm sure we'll be covering a lot more of that. The purpose behind my pain is focus on pleasing God because he's worthy, not for healing me from my stroke or healing my bank account because I'm broke. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's kind of where my, my walk is, is yeah. these days. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I understand uh, that I had, I had to do the same thing was understand what God did for me. Mm-hmm. And understand that he's going to continue, again, as I started from the beginning of our segment here, is that I have to trust him because I'm still in the same situation. Financially, yeah. there's always, there, it's, all, it's always, 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 and I can use that word, yeah. a challenge financially. <laughs> I don't care if I am doing a million dollars worth of business. Usually at that time, I need a million ten to cover whatever's going on right, <laughs> is the way it is. Yeah. And I know um, that uh, there's budgeting, there's things that you can do, uh, and, and there's, there's ways of, of, of trying to keep, keep the peace. And we have, you know, like Dave Ramsey talks about financial peace. Right. But when the situations are out of our control, right. Am I depending on my savings? Am I depending on somebody else? Or am I depending on God to take care of me through this situation? Man, well, you, know, you said something that was, again, it's all about the word. It's probably right? profound. It's, it's all about the word. Well, it's very <laughs> profound. In fact, I'm going I'm to give you a little trophy after this. Oh, uh, okay. Mr. Thank you. Profundity. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. But, you know, God's word says that the ways of man are right in his own eyes. But God mm. measures the heart. Mm. So, you know, I can, I can justify about any action. I can reconcile anything I've ever done in the past. <laughs> Man, look, I, you know, I should have been a lawyer, dude, because mm. I can justify, I can argue any point. But in the end, in the end, where's your heart in the matter? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I ask people that all the time. You know, I, I get to talk to people because of the authenticity of my struggle. Mm-hmm. And people will say, Man, I don't understand how, or I, you know, what do you do, or what's going on? And my, 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 my uh, toss back to them is usually, okay, I understand you're feeling that way, but where's your heart mm-hmm. in the matter? Did you do that because you wanted payback? Did you do that because you had righteous indignation? Did you do that because God prompted you to? Where is your heart? Mm-hmm. You know, so, so I, I, one thing I love about Christianity is it is really a religion of, of the heart. Mm-hmm. And it often comes down to how do you feel about how you feel. Mm. It's not how do you feel, how do you feel about how you feel? Mm. You know, am I, am I uh, living under condemnation because I didn't, I didn't feel correctly about that situation? 
If, if so, God's word says there is now no condemnation. So what are you doing? You know, you put yourself above God. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't mean to run off on that little tangent, but you know, at the end of the day, it's you know, where's your heart? And my heart was in give me the blessing, relieve the pain. Not God, you are good. You are always good and worthy of my praise, worthy of my obedience. And which is which is such a crazy change because I never saw that. I was the good kid. Mm. I was a good kid. My you know, my mom lives with us now since my father passed away last year. And and my son asked my mom, uh, was my dad really that kid? <laughs> and my mom was like, Well, yeah, you know, he was was he ever home late? Did he ever come out past curfew? No. Did you ever was he ever drink? No. I mean, just no, you know. So to go from that kid who was so careful to to do uh, to to paint within the lines because that was, that's you know my family deserved that from me. They deserve to be a guy who was rebellious in heart. Boy, that just came out of my mouth. I mean, that was. But I mean, I had, and sometimes still have a rebellious heart. You know, I, I sometimes, and, as, and, and you know this as an entrepreneur, sometimes you believe, you know, the laws of gravity don't apply to me mm. because, you know, I'm, I can, you know, I'm smarter than that mm. or I can outdo that. And it, it's a function of a rebellious heart. And mm-hmm. so, um, and the same thing is true as it concerns money. I want to bring it back around to the money part is, you know, the, my rebellious heart was, tell me what I need to do to stop my pain. Right. We don't like being in pain. Right. It's not about... God, let me focus on your word. God, let me do what you said to do with a clean heart. You know, create in me a clean heart, oh God. Mm-hmm. Love Isaiah. Right. And so it, it, that, that became the focus, was to kill the pain, not to get back in connectivity with my Heavenly Father. So I can, you know, wow, this whole segment just kind of brought that all around. <laughs> Well, that's Thank what it God. is about get real. Ah, get man, real. Then get more real than that, buddy. That is straight off the cuff. So, wow, rebellious heart, huh? Wow, I'm going to have to write that down and figure that out. But anyway, so you asked and you got <laughs> the whole truth and yeah. nothing but the truth. That's, well, that's what oh, we're here for. Oh, good Lord. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that, uh, that the people that are watching this understand uh-huh. that they're not alone. No, no, and that's that's what the beauty of the diversity between you know because you and I have been through a lot of the same issues. We've dealt with them differently because I, the beautiful thing about God is, and this number is higher for you. He knows the number of hairs on your head, <laughs> right? And so if He knows you that well, then He He's dealing with you as Jeffrey, right? And He deals with Chuck as Chuck, and He He knows. You know, I feel like David sometimes, man, my sins are ever before me. But he deals with us in a ways that are directly unique to us because we are inextricably unique to him. Mm-hmm. And so your issue is something that you're dealing with, but you're, you're walking through it. And of course, you got Amy, you know, so, and, and God, God's seeing that, right? He's like, well, Chuck's dealing with it better because he didn't have an Amy in his life. <laughs> but, but seriously. I am definitely you know, blessed. Yeah. Yes, Absolutely. So, but, but that's, that's just a God thing. So people are still, if you guys out there are still dealing with these things, hang on. Because he knows the number of hairs on your head. God is not a respecter of persons. And what he's doing for Jeffrey and what he's doing for me, he's doing for you. Right, right. Uh, Got to close it out. We'll close it out with a scripture that I stand on. Another one uh, is uh, Proverbs 3, 5, 6, 7, and 8. We're going to read it and it's going to close us out. Uh, and then we're going to come back and do a little close also. It says, uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. This is out of the NIV. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. That's hard for me. Trust in him, and he's going to make my path straight. Not trust in him or trust in Jeffrey or trust in Chuck. Trust in him. He will make our path straight. And again, that was in the last year or so. Believing that. Yeah. Wow. Then 7 says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Oh, my goodness. That's a whole segment, Chuck. Yeah. 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 We Let's might have pro- to talk about that later. Write that down, Roland. Yeah. <laughs> says, uh, fear the Lord and shun evil. You know, that's another thing. A fear of the Lord. I, I, people say fear the Lord. Okay, it's got to be, you know, scared, scared, scared. It's not about, I, it's, for me, it was just 
loving, grateful. It's a respectful uh, reverence. Respectful reverence. Yeah. Uh, that's what the fear here is is mm -hmm. uh, meaning. Yes. Uh, this will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. And it's healthy you know, body. Again, we're in our place where we're supposed to be right now today. Right. And uh, that's, I want to close that out. And uh, Chuck, again, I want to thank you for just sitting with me and just getting real with Jeffrey and Chuck and, mm -hmm. and us just hanging out. It's a good idea you had. We should do this again. We will. Okay. On the next segment. <laughs> okay, brother. Booyah. Booyah. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this segment. I know that Chuck and I uh, uh, probably had to deal with some stuff that we probably didn't want to talk about, but we did. So, uh, Chuck, what, what, what was your take on that? Man, you know, I'll tell you, transparency changes everything. You and I always talk about how if you want to impress people, tell them about your successes. And if you want to impact people, tell them about your failures. And, man, i got to tell you, as, as you guys heard, money has, has been a big failure for me in the past and you know but god's going to keep dealing with me we, we hope and, and pray that, that he'll continue to do that we want to hear from you though we've got some great stuff that we struggle with that we help each other with we want to hear from you so just send us an email to this address right here it's approximately <laughs> there somewhere and and let us know what you'd like to hear us talk about what would impact you because it's all about making an impact okay guys thanks so much for tuning in and until next time we'll see you <laughs>